So random walk is a very simple idea and uh, I'm just going to show you why and how is it important and what are the applications out there which is useful using this concept okay right so uh, well what is random walk right? the definition says it refers to approximately random movement of an entity so anything that is randomly moves uh, I can call random walk so uh, what is the uh, importance of this the one of those things are the cellular automation uh, well it's a big word if you're never familiar with the science uh, things right um, let me put this in uh, another context that you can uh, understand easily right okay so let's assume uh, let's assume you you are in uh, some area which is let's say you you are hiding in some place right let me draw it here okay so this is you uh and your house and then you have a big area like this around you so this is your uh let's say this is your uh the surrounding right and uh, i mean the your uh, the garden or whatever you call it okay and then uh, this is far away like like half a mile on the radius kind of thing and you get to know uh, if there are enemies coming in or any intruders getting in here right enter to your property so how do I really going to know um, if some somebody is trespassing your property like that right uh, this is good for uh, yeah the camps or anything like that the based on uh, uh, that you need more security kind of things instead of having people watching you can have something called sensors right so little sensors tiny dust kind of type things uh, you can put everywhere like this right so that's the one way of uh, detecting there is somebody is coming to your area right uh, uh, okay so this is really small that means uh, and you can put 10,000 and thousands of them uh, around this area and whenever one is disturbed it can produce a signal and uh, so then uh, yeah you can you have to transmit that signal to your security center right here okay so that is your security center right but the thing is if this is really small uh, smaller than uh, anything that you can see right um, in that case uh, how do I really going to give power to this one like can I wire anything like that to uh, get the power or the electricity onto these devices well that is too much work right so you have to put wires 10,000 pieces of wires everywhere it's not going to work right and uh, because of that well um, one way of making these things you can have its uh, solar uh, energy that you can use to energize this so in that case if you're using uh, solar energy kind of things it doesn't have much power to transmit a signal all the way to the security center right so that is not possible so what is the solution if i don't have that kind of uh, ability so these guys are very small don't have much power uh, they consume the power from uh, solar so it is very small but I want to deliver my message all the way to the center right the security center so if there are intruder comes in uh, if I want to mass send the message what I can do is I can transmit the message randomly right so this one will pick up by this guy and that signal band pick up by this one and everybody around it so like that it will find its own path to the center so whatever its triggers you can ad hoc uh, the signal into the center right so that is a good way of delivering uh, the things uh, through a random manner uh, and uh, it will make a path to come to the uh, the destination from this point to this one right so that kind of uh, idea 
we call uh, cellular automation is one kind of things like that so it will find its own path uh, toward the center and you deliver the message okay uh, I say start the signal here and say okay the initial signal ID of this cell or, uh, or the unit will pass into everything so at, at the center you know which area the intruder was uh, identified so it's like that so you can do kind of a, this is one kind of idea especially uh, be related to cellular automation uh, uh, we call it network ad hoc right so that is one uh, specifically this kind of uh, uh, things related to that okay so that is a transmission rule so you will have some transmission rules the local relationships and specifying those things uh, but anyway uh, you can generate randomly and uh, send the signal so that is what one idea of this uh, random uh, generated uh, or gen we call it random walk kind of things okay all right so uh, there's another example uh, showing in the book uh, about uh, DNA uh, sequencing so what is DNA sequencing and why is it important well uh, well, I'm not much into biology, so but uh, the basically, let me tell you one example I read about is let's say uh, let's say you need a transplant. So uh, you're a person who need let's say I need a, a kidney, right? Transplant. Okay. So it's one thing. Uh, okay. So in order to get a kidney from somebody else uh, you have to match certain things you have to make sure this one is match yours uh, blood type and all the other things right okay so what if you don't check those or you just check the blood type and put it in here so sometimes when you're having some foreign objects inside your body especially when you get cold or something like that what happened what does what your body do well, your body will start attacking it, right? They recognize it as a foreign object and the body will attack. So in this case, your life is in threat as well as <coughs> the organ, whatever you implant after spending a lot of money, waiting on the list and all that. Well, that's not might uh, work for you. In that case, it's all the waste, right? So in that case, it's better you have confirmed a uh, way of uh, way, way to confirm that this is an exact match and nobody will going to attack when it's implanted inside you right so that's a good way of doing this so uh, one of the theories out there well it will be very good if you can do the the matching of the dna patterns or something like that uh, which is related to mostly uh, uh, the biology related uh, to dna and structures and all that right so this is what uh, some one of the things that uh, uh, out there is uh, dna sequencing which is you have these uh, the protein uh, units and uh, i think it is a and t goes together and the c and g goes together and you can make uh, plenty of uh, structures out of this okay and uh, once you having the structures you can make a dna sequence right this dna sequence might have uh, millions and billions of threads which is a combination of these four units okay so i think these are called protein elements okay so uh, how can i end up making uh, all the sequence that i can come up with these four well that is actually a uh, time consuming uh, factor that uh, not one person can do right and uh, so this uh, DNA sequencing is still out there and you still doing experiment on it uh, one of the things uh, which is uh, took my attention was they had a game introduced in uh, many years ago I think it's 2010 I think as I remember uh, to check the de uh, I mean, uh, what what they do is they compare the DNA sequence of uh, we and other animals and see which ones go much closer 
and uh, which ones are very familiar uh, with our sequence right uh, in order to do this uh, well you have to check a lot of uh, uh, I mean you have to match a lot of sequence like this right um, one of the pretty cool thing uh, so the one person came up with is they design a game which you can uh, match this and build up a sequence so and they what, what what is this person's idea was yeah I can come up with sequences if so many people play the game so they put it in online and then let the people to uh, play around with it so in this case whenever people go and play around uh, matching the sequence of this it will generate new type of sequence and that's so if there are million people were playing so you can make million sequences or pieces of sequence and you put together in within seconds you can come up with a good number of uh, DNA sequence uh, that uh, you can use for uh, any other purposes right so that is one of the things so it is random right uh, I assure you one of the games the idea to show you the idea what it is um, this is one of the games out there um, so you can uh, let me clear this out so yeah so uh, this is one of the games uh, I just put the link there uh, I think the Chrome won't run it because the Chrome is banned uh, flash but uh, this is a flash game which is pretty old one of them uh, so uh, build a DNA molecules that's what you do you go here and you just play around so and uh, you feel like it's a game but uh, it has a scientific value in it like so I can I can plug these things uh, so whatever it gives me I will go and plug another right so I cannot have C or G with uh, T so if I click that it says wrong wrong and then I have to go with A and uh, it will build so it's picking up one random value and asking you to match that with the other values so whenever it's giving me one random I'm going to give the matching one like that so in that case yeah uh, it will build up a sequence uh, so this kind of sequences you can uh, use it for uh, to do the many research and everything so this is this they are explaining what is molecules and how you combine these things right so that is a very basic idea uh, and pretty powerful one uh, using a random uh, generated sequence using a random manner right so those are the ideas and uh, that's why um, random walk has more influence in many things because you can use it for many many applications okay right so that's the usefulness of it okay so now uh, let's talk about what is this what what are you learning in this chapter uh, so let's say uh, if you want to move on a direction north uh, east northwest southeast and southwest so that means what you always moving diagonally right uh, what does this means is uh, well if I want to move in my a space diagonally right, in, a, in a direction of diagonal direction like for example this is my space right this and I want to go either this direction this direction this direction like that right so you can see these are north east west uh, southeast southwest so uh, if you go in this direction of course those are south directions okay but anyway uh, what is this saying is one unit uh, of if you go north one unit and uh, again a west one unit one unit means you your diagonal distance is this what is that means well if you get uh, if you know what is Pythagoras theorem right so you go this way and you go upward and you end up here right so if you go to left and then up or the right to up uh, in this case is left to up I mean rightward and up uh, the total distance you travel I mean the distance your movement is 
this that is your displacement right this displacement is you claim as this amount why well if you call this one unit and if you call this one unit uh, according to Pythagoras theorem the square of this plus square of this is equal to square of this so in that case if I want to calculate the distance I travel I do is this plus this and the square root of it that is the distance of this diagonal of space right so that is equal to what well this is equal to one square is one plus one square is one is equal to two square okay so that's how we get it so that means if i get a one unit i'm getting a unit one cell distance for each and then if i want to move to here to here and uh, go this way this is where i end up so the displacement is this much okay so that is what uh, they're saying here on the random walk so you start always from the center and then you move it like that okay so we develop a uh, random walk using a uh, algorithm here well as i said i'm not uh, pushing you to algorithms because not all of you are uh, computer science and uh, most of it most of you are not familiar with computer science stuff so because of that i just give you a basic algorithm but uh, yeah try to understand what you're doing here that is important uh, but you don't have to remember how to do this. Okay, so anyway How do I generate something to move? Uh, in that that way of uh, moving right so what I'm saying is how do I generate a random movement of an object? Right in a space in a given space, All right? So what you do here in this example? Uh, so th this is very important that you know this example, right? Okay, so let's say uh, I'm throwing a random value so there is a random value uh, it can be anything right right any value uh, it can be 1 million it can be 10,000 it can be 1 it can be uh, 20 or what right so when I ask for a random value I can get any of these right anything that it comes to your mind is a random as well right so things like that right so uh, these are random values is not used for this kind of algorithm which is I want to make is this this uh, whatever this object is moving on some directions so it will be randomly moving like that right okay so in this case well it doesn't mean anything with these numbers so but I can convert this and use this uh, with a useful uh, idea what I'm doing here is uh, I'm converting this random number to generate either 0 or 1. How do I do that? How can I get generate two numbers out of the list of random numbers? That's the question, right? So that's the first thing you're going to learn here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rand mod 2. So if you get rand mod 2 what will happen is this any of these numbers any of these numbers divide by 2 right and you get what you get the remainder okay so either these numbers will divisible by 2 for example 20 is divisible by 2 the remainder is 0 1005 is not divisible by 2 but 1004 is so the remainder is 1 and 10,007 again it's not divisible by 2 it's an odd number so that means it's 1 so like that I can generate 0 or 1 so this is how uh, I'm, I'm executing this line it will give me either 0 or 1 so this is a good start right then how do I make the general uh, general walk on the in the random manner well then Okay, so here it is. So now I'm starting from x0 and the y0. So I'm starting from right here. And then I throw, uh, I'm getting a random number and I get the mod of that. And then that means it will give me the 0, 1. So if I, if I get 0 as the random number, then I'm incrementing my x value. So x was 0 at the beginning, 
right and now if I uh, if I have this value so he will be what x will be uh, x will be equal to x plus 1 so the previous x value plus 1 right, so that's what I, that's what I'm going to get if it is not uh, if it is not 0 so that means it's not uh, I mean this is a random value okay uh, random value and x is 0 um, at the beginning but anyway um, so the random value is if the random value equals equals 0 right in that case uh, according to this I'm moving it 1 plus if it is not equal to 0 so it is rand uh, value well let me write it better so don't want to confuse you here so let me write it better okay so yeah let me do it in this way uh, I will write it just on front of this so um, if the rand is 0 x will be equal to x plus 1 if a random number is 1 or something else in this case it's 1 obviously x will be equal to x minus 1 so I'm done with the one random generation I can either decide which direction I'm going so what this means is I'm either go this direction or I'm going this direction right this is a minus value this is a positive value okay so one way or the other and then what um, okay so it's good and then uh, uh, then I have to decide my y value so I'm getting the same thing for the y in this case uh, I would say uh, instead of x's right now I'm using y's so for the y uh, what you can do is the same so here uh, I have my uh, check the random right so if it is 0 I would say y equal y plus 1 if it is uh, uh, else I mean the random number is 1 then I get this so that means either I'm going moving forward up or the down so now uh, using this idea I can generate a random movement right so this is the idea here so the algorithm uh, what is this explaining up here is that so that is this is how you write the algorithm um, your input is x0 y0 and you generate random number each time and uh, you just uh, make a movement accordingly and then what at the end I have x value and y value and I'm plotting uh, my movements so what is what what is that means well uh, that means if I'm here right I will add uh, one x value one y value so that means I'm ending here so if I start from here and uh, if I get random value and if that random value is z uh, zero uh, on the x x factor I'm moving this way if my y value is one then I'm moving down so uh, yeah like that I can move right so let's say in this one uh, in this ch this section right here uh, we have some random generated path right so it's look weird yeah uh, so it's traveling everywhere so this is one thing I will give you as your exercise to do so uh, I'm wondering how can I give you this uh, well, if you're if I'm doing in the class exam so of course otherwise I have to think about giving you an question like this uh, how to generate this okay anyway uh, let's say you are here right now at the beginning right this is the center of the origin place that you start with and then uh, if your x is uh, x is uh, I mean the random is zero that means you move this way right and then uh, if your random is the ran, uh, random for the y is one that means you move this way so you end up here 
now you're here next time let's say I got my random x value as uh, random x for random value for the x is 1 so that means I'm moving this way and my uh, random y is also 1 then I'm moving this way so I end up here right again if my random for the x value is 1 that means I'm moving this way and the y is still 1 so then I'm going this way so on so the next one is actually the y is positive and the uh, x is positive so the x is positive means I'm going this and the y is positive I went this right and then the next one is seems like I got 1 for the x I mean 0 for the x and 0 for the y right and then I got uh, I can decide the next one is I got uh, 1 for the x and uh, 0 for the y so I go here right like that uh, either so if I come back it will be end up here uh, uh, if it is not I might go up and come back and uh, move on the same path again it seems like right so there's a dead end here that means it will have to be the same path backward right and then go up go down what does this means go up go down means the next x I might have uh, 1 and y 0 right for the y and then again the next iteration I might have x uh, for the 0 and y for the 1 so I'm coming back here so the path is this but I movement is this right so in that case I'm right here again so yeah so like that anyway so uh, whenever you do the random times how many times you do it this will generate this path but your movement the displacement is diagonal right x y value is the one that decide which diagonal direction what is your end point so these end points are actually northeast northwest southeast southwest right okay so then at the end this is your end point this is where you ended so what is the travel distance right so this is the next question what is the travel distance well the travel distance will give you by your last destination and uh, the beginning position and the distance between these two that is your travel distance how do you calculate this uh, it's pretty easy this is uh, again the triangle the Pythagoras theorem that you can use right so these are two units right here so these are two units how many is one unit one unit is this much right so two of them here, here. and uh, the other from here to here uh, you have three units that's the one way of calculation right there's other way of doing this too uh, so that is one way of calculating this is yeah I can add all these together right that is three square root and square this plus two square roots and square this and find the square root of it right how much I get here uh, let's see uh, 9 multiplied by 2 that is 18 and uh, here I get 4 multiplied by 2 which is 8 right that's what I get so the square root of this is uh, the value which is the travel distance or the movement of this so that means what 24 or 26 26 All right. it is 8 point something right yeah because it's less than 27 ah not 8 point something I'm sorry my bad I'm taking that eight back uh, this would be uh, 5 point something 5.0 something right because 5 square is 25 so it's 26 it's very close all right so it is approximately 5 you can say right yeah and uh, is there another way to do this well I can do something like this so it's very close to 5 right yeah so when you calculate it like this and uh, the other way of doing this is um, 
either I can do this distances like that or I can I can also get my x distance from here to here and that is that is my x distance from here to here is uh, minus y square that and then my y distance which is minus 1 so minus 1 squared and then get the square root of that isn't that the same yeah 25 plus 1 Wow, it gives me the same value when I do that. So what does that mean? That means the distance I travel on this whole thing, uh, I mean from here to here, right? Either I can calculate it by the units like that, or either I can calculate it by uh, just get the x squared and add the y squared and then get the square root of that like this right so there are two ways of doing this but this is the way the book says books explains right right okay so that's what you're going to do right anyway all right so let's move on uh that is what the next section actually talking about how do you actually talk, take care of the distance so animated paths don't worry about this this is just showing the path of movement uh, as, that's why I said I don't want to push you for the algorithms but the return we return the distance from the last point that you stop from the origin so I would ask you to calculate this uh, so you should be able to right and how you calculate it is this algorithm right here so you you increment the x values you increment the y values at the end you return x squared by y squared so that will give you the distance uh, the one I just talked right and yes uh, the average distance you covered uh, that is actually the mean of all this uh, the calculations that you can actually uh, see in each step how many how much uh, distance you covered so this is a plot average distance traveled versus the number of steps in the random walk so that means a random walk versus I mean the whenever you travel right number of steps that you travel like for example uh, let's say uh, so what what this means is right uh, and then uh, let me draw this so this is what you do is uh, I will have my uh, Cartesian system like this and I might throw my dice and then I mean the random values I might go on the same path again and all that so these are number of steps I'm moving and I'm stopping here all right so these are the number of steps I moved okay and I stop here and the average distance means average distance so that means if I uh, move like that so what is the distance from here to here that is your distance actually right so the average of that means you run this several times for this many steps and you calculate the distance for let's say I calculate this distance for uh, six or ten ten steps I run this ten steps uh, for five iterations and I calculate these distances distance one distance 2 again after some other time I'm running the same system right it can be first time it might be showing like this the second time it might be showing like uh, something like this and you stop here then you calculate again from here to here that is d2 like that you do five times and then you add all d1 plus d2 plus and so on until uh, d5 and then divide this by 5 is your average distance so when you when you plot the average distance over time so you get some values like this right and then you plot that with uh, uh, with the average steps that you get I mean the number of steps you get and the distance average distance each 
iterations if you do it more iterations so you get <coughs> something interesting like this that is what it's showing here right okay uh, well, and then uh, if you set up a path I mean the equation for this this is something that we talk about in empirical model so if I have something distributed like this you can see it is look like uh, it look like something which is I can covered by one straight line like this right to cover everything average I can approximate one line which is give you by y equals uh, mx plus b right kind of thing right so uh, that is the one idea here by looking at this but it can be a little bit curvy one like like this right so in that case uh, it might have more than one x value so it is x squared plus something right x plus b or something like that it can be something like this right so anyway uh, whatever it is you can calculate and look at it um, <coughs> using uh, the empirical model equations that we were discussed in one of the chapters right so this is one way of just you looking at it and uh, how you uh, average it out and you can actually generate a formula for this right so this is a formula that you're generating what is the worth of the formula well that means without doing all this uh, if I if I have a formula or the equation right so I can plug any value for the x uh, any value for the x and then I can generate y so that means I can decide well if I do it for 60 here right uh, what is the corresponding y value is going to be what is the average distance if I do the 60 steps in this algorithm if I apply some rules into that <coughs> and if I do it for 60 steps what is the distance is usually going to travel so that is what you can figure it out right so basically uh, either 60,000 in that case uh, steps you have to do a lot of calculations for doing that you don't have to well you plug it this into this equation right here or right here and then I can say if I do that 60,000 steps how many average distance I travel just is why this is important to uh, come up with these kind of plotting things and come up with the empirical model to calculate the equations and you can determine approximate things right that is also kind of modeling the same thing in the Vensium that we do but in this is not rate of change this is about setting up in a plot in an equation or a graph and predict the things what going to happen uh, which is unpredicted in the future or and you cannot do the experiment actually you can do only for smaller values but you generate something which you can assume or approximate that can happen right so, okay so this is idea of it and uh, this is all modeling concepts right so so that's what uh, this chapter is all about I think uh, yeah so uh, yeah do the review questions on it it will be really straightforward and the answers will be there in your end of that chapter right and uh, yeah so uh, this is very simple and straightforward so I don't have to explain much in it okay so we'll uh, look at diffusion next and then uh, we will have a quiz on that okay all right so I'll see you in another lecture